All right, is this a bit of a change? Uh, yeah, a massive change. Basically, as you said, Vision Zero's sole goal is eliminating fatalities and serious injuries on the road. So where most road safety plans like the Safer Journeys uh, plan that we have at the moment tries to stop crashes from happening in the first place, this one is going to basically say that humans make errors. We know that we're, you know, we have flaws. Uh, so how do we stop serious injuries and fatalities when those mistakes happen? And how do they go about doing that? Well, I mean, the key to Vision Zero is is taking a scientific evidence-based approach to road safety. So a very good example is with the argument between roundabouts and traffic lights. Uh, for the past decade or so, we've tended towards traffic lights because there's less crashes at traffic lights, um, even if traffic might flow a little bit faster with roundabouts. But in a place like Sweden, where Vision Zero started in the 90s, they go with roundabouts because they've found that although there's more crashes... Right the level of crashes is far less serious. They're little dings from funny little angles, whereas if there's a crash at a traffic light, you're much, much more likely to have a serious injury or fatality in that sort of crash. So that's the sort of change we might be able to see in this new so, plan. So does this mean moving away from driver training and driver education? Because, you know, a lot of people in this whole debate that you've been you know, reporting on the last few months have really been, you know, it's all about drivers and they've got to be better trained yeah. and this sort of thing. No, it's, it's certainly not going away. They, it's supposed to be a, a whole approach. So um, driver training is still important. The roads themselves are still important. There'll still be investment in, in the roads and that sort of thing. What will be interesting to see is whether they uh, go away from some of the aspects that have worked in Sweden with Vision Zero. Uh, so we're talking about the speed limits, mm. which Julian Gent has already come out and said we're not doing blanket speed limit reductions. But in Sweden, that's exactly what happens. They drop the speed limit to 80 kilometres an hour where there's no uh, median barrier, and then the motorways are 110, 120, where they're engineered to be that fast. So. That's already been ruled out. So we might be getting a slightly watered down version of Vision Zero, uh, but they're still going to be working on those infrastructure gains and all those sorts of things. And there's no s sense of, I mean, Julian Gento was very quick to rule out that speed blanket speed reduction. I mean, it's, well, it's a it's a political issue as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's the, the main issue is um, I, th I feel like there's going to be a, a lot of people who would find that a, a very bad Particularly move. Particularly in regional the, areas. That's right, that's right. People like going 100 kilometres an hour. Um, there's probably a little bit of denial that the roads are uh, dangerous because of that issue that we think it's the drivers that are making the errors. And that's where Vision Zero comes in and says, we know that drivers can be good, but we also know that they make mistakes. So how do we make this road safer so that if you do crash, you're not ploughing into a tree um, at 100 kilometres an hour, you're p potentially going to survive that mistake. All right, so when it comes to the roads, I mean, people have pointed out the Road Transport Forum, Paul Goldsmith, um, Sweden has, of course, much higher quality when it comes to their roading network. So, But we, we don't really have the resources to, to spend billions on our roads, do we? No, that's right. I don't think we will ever see a future where New Zealand's going to have motorways and expressways across the entire state highway network. So that's not something that's going to be achievable, but... Um, there, there are going to be improvements to our roads with median barriers and side barriers and that sort of thing, cheaper, um, cheaper things to do and achieve. I think it costs about $2 million per kilometre to put in a median barrier because you have to widen the road and all that sort of thing. And that's proven to prevent fatalities and serious injuries because head-on crashes, are, I think it's 25% of all crashes are head-ons. And you're going to reduce fatalities by up to 60% if you if you do that. So those are the sort of changes we might see more of is uh, things that are scientifically proven, like Vision Zero wants, uh, to reduce these serious injuries and fatalities. Mm -hmm.